Hello there, my name is Brandon and in this video I'm going to cover a few principles and the workflow required to create pixel art character animations in Clip Studio Paint. Today we're going to focus on running and jumping actions for small sprite work using my little mech pilot here as an example. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm creating is a simple four frame run cycle. For this action we're actually going to only use three unique poses for the character. Uh, there's going to be a stepping pose for each leg in the forward position and then a neutral pass-through frame that can work as a transition between those steps both times. I've copied over my neutral standing sprite and then moved the hands and feet around to create the new poses. And what's important here too is that I'm arranging the poses such that the head is one pixel higher on each of the steps than it is on the pass-through frame. And this alternating is going to make the head bob up and down as the run animation plays. So now that the poses are ready to go, we can bring up the animation panel by going up to Window and selecting Timeline. The first thing we'll want to do is create our animation work area by clicking on the button labeled New Timeline. Now this is a 4 frame loop, so I'm going to change the playback time to 4 frames. And then I'll also give this timeline a name so I can easily tell what it's being used for. Now we're going to want to arrange this loop with the character running in place. So I'm just dragging those layers over top one another. And in this case, I'm using the alignment of the head to know where they should be overlapped. To turn this into a playable animation, we'll add a new animation folder and then drag and drop the run cycle frames into that folder. They've now disappeared from the screen and we can call them up one at a time across the timeline by toggling on a frame and then clicking the specify cells button. A faster way to do this is by right clicking on frame and then selecting your layer that way. So I repeat this to drop in the four frames of the run cycle where frames two and four are actually that same pass through frame. When we hit the play button, we can see the resulting animation. Now this one came out surprisingly prancier than I was intending, but that's all right for now. And the other thing that I'm feeling right now too is that it's playing a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna adjust the frame rate by going to animation, timeline, and change frame rate. And I feel like dropping this from 10 frames per second down to eight should slow it down just enough to suit this particular animation. If we want to make edits to the animation without losing the original version, we can actually click on the animation folder and then duplicate it. And it'll create a copy of all those same layers and their assignments within the timeline. So I'm going to rename the original one to version one, and then I'll call the duplicate version two, because I want to go back through and explore an alternate run posture where the front arm comes further over the body. And rather than sharing the same pass through frame between each step, I'm actually going to create a unique one for each occurrence uh, based on the movement of that front arm. The other thing that I'm doing here is I'm pushing the head forward on all frames to give more of a forward lean to the posture of the run cycle. Now that there are two versions of the four frame run, we can actually do a side by side comparison by enabling the view on each animation folder and then dragging one of them to a different part of the canvas for clarity. I think I prefer the second version a little bit more, uh, but I like to think that maybe both could exist in the same game and maybe they'd just be used under different contexts or something. So just to summarize, the four frame run cycle has that alternating structure of step, pass through, step, pass through. Um, so it's pretty simple, but it can be a bit limiting in terms of the body language. So if we wanted to achieve a bit more customizability, we could create the run as a six frame loop, which follows the pattern of a launch or a push off pose, um, a contact, and then a step through. And this trio of poses occurs twice, uh, one for each side of the body leading that action. I like the look of a six frame run for small sprite work like this because it's still relatively straightforward to assemble, but the additional frame count really enhances the readability. And I just wanted to go over real quick how this was put together uh, because I used kind of a different approach this time around that might be helpful for some. So to get started, I'll create a new timeline for the six frame run. We'll use a frame rate of 10 FPS this time around. And then of course the playback time should be set to six frames. The first thing I did was to create six replicate layers of just the character head. And on frames three and six, I moved the head down by a single pixel to create that head bobbing on the pass through pose. Now what I'm gonna do is introduce each part of the body one at a time and sort of follow the action of that single piece throughout the entire six frames of the animation. So to start, I'm placing the hands because it's kind of one of the easier things to imagine sort of this arcing motion that they'll be making throughout the run. When I first started making pixel art, I found it a little bit overwhelming to try to create full individual poses while assembling an animation like this. 
So if you feel a similar way, it might help to explore the idea of breaking down these individual body parts on a per frame basis like this. Um, one of the other benefits is that this allows us to plan out the positions of key sprite details so that they won't get obscured in the pose. One of the things I try to do in that regard is to have the back part of the sprite in a darker color than the front, uh, kind of as if it's shaded towards the back, right? So this character has that pink and yellow combo on the front side, hands and shoulders, and then that sort of purple and orange for the far side. And this kind of helps distinguish those pieces when they're in motion. So using this piecewise approach, I ended up with this rough draft of the run. And through some fine tuning, there's a lot of room for subtle customization into different kinds of body language for the run too. So for example, for this one, I've got the head turning away as the arm comes across. And then for this one, I changed the arms kind of drawing in circles rather than moving back and forth like that original arc. So, you know, even with small sprite work like this, we can make these subtle variations to the poses and details and yield very different characterizations in the tone of the run cycle itself. All right, next up, we're gonna explore a simple jump animation for the pilot. I've created yet another timeline and this one's on an 8 frame loop for now while I work out everything that'll be required for the action. I've copied over the neutral standing sprite and I'm editing this one to generate a crouching pose that'll play right before they leap the ground. So it kind of looks like there's some bounce and power behind the jump. I've tried to make the crouch very squished down and bouncy feeling. And then to contrast that for the initial launch pose, I'm going kind of the opposite way with it and trying to almost elongate the body in a sense and drive a lot of the features more vertical to accentuate the liftoff. This idea draws from an animation principle known as squash and stretch, which together describe a sort of stylized treatment of elasticity. A good example of squash would be sort of a deformation brought about by an impact, whereas stretch is more of an elongation during travel, uh, as if there's some indication of inertia in that movement. In both cases, we're getting a feel for how this material behaves, and so in the context of a jumping animation, you're able to make the character feel less rigid and kind of exaggerate the momentum of their actions. The degree to which it's used in an obvious way depends on the kind of abstraction you desire for your character. So for something like the pilot, I'm going a little bit more subtle than that of like the cute looking ball of green slime, uh, but it'll still be a nice effect within the sequence. So now that I've got those poses worked out, it's time to actually assemble the animation. And right here, I'm using the onion skin feature to help me, uh, which is gonna show me the previous frame in blue and then the next frame in green. And this is a good way to fine tune the placement of the current frame uh, for being able to identify the rhythm that you want for the jump. In the end, I think my first pass here came back looking a little bit heavy. So to get it feeling lighter and floatier, I'm gonna go back and increase the frame count to 12. And the other finishing detail that I'm creating here is a small trail of light emanating from one of the lights on the helmet. I thought this trail would be a really cool effect. And in addition to the idea of the squash and stretch, having a light smear like this also helps indicate the speed and momentum of the action too. I should mention as well that I planned out this jump height using these lines to make sure that the character is clearing their own height, um, which I thought would be a good look from the standpoint of treating this like an asset for a platformer game. And so I got the idea to double this up and repeat that action again for a double jump. So first of all, I'll need a higher frame count for that. So I go to timeline, change settings, and then increase the frame count by six frames. Next, I copy the animation folder so that I preserve that original single jump and then on the frames of the new double jump folder, I split the clip at the apex of the jump, since this is where the second jump is going to start. To split a clip, you toggle on the applicable frame, and then right click and select split clip. What this does is it gives you individual control over that block of the sequence. So in this case, there's an entire block of frames where they're just falling to the ground. And so I'm dragging that to the end of the timeline, and this has now given me an empty gap of six frames in the middle that I can use to insert the second jump. To create that second jump, I'm duplicating the original jump poses and then just repositioning them higher. Um, so this part doesn't even require any additional artwork, it's more about just repurposing these existing frames and assets to create a new sequence. Uh, in this case, my first attempt came out perhaps a bit too floaty this time around, probably overcorrecting from last time. Uh, so I've gone through to fine tune the positions here, and I ended up with this final comparison sheet here. So for that one at the end, I've taken a crouch frame and rotated it incrementally by 90 degrees to create this rolling flip motion as sort of an additional flourish. And lastly, I just wanted to discuss how to export these assets in the event that you may want to use them in game development. 
One of the things that's great about the animation workflow so far is that all my individual animations have been created on new timelines within this one file. So if I toggle the dropdown, I can easily flip through each of these animations. Uh, in that way, this sort of works as being like a perfect master file for the character sprite itself. And when it comes to exporting for use in game development, we'll want to arrange the sprites side by side in equivalently spaced cells, uh, kind of like a sprite sheet or sprite strip idea. In this case, I'm going to enable an 8x8 grid just to assist me visually for this alignment. And then for something like the 4 frame run cycle, we'll ungroup the animation folder so that we can access all the frames at once and then rearrange them into these cells. In this example, my character size is nicely within a 16 by 16 space, so that's going to be kind of my cell size. And I'm also going to hide the background layer because we want the character isolated on a transparent background. And after they're all in place, uh, you just click on File, Export, and then save it as a PNG file type. All right, well, that'll do it for this introduction to Sprite Animation in Clip Studio Paint. I hope you enjoyed seeing the workflow here. And in the next video, we're gonna bring that teddy bear mech into the picture because I wanna do kind of a start to finish example where I create an animation of the pilot hopping in and out of that mech. So stay tuned for that if you'd like to see more animation. And in the meantime, thanks for watching.